In this module, we're talking about what's called VESPER theory. Uh, VESPER stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, uh, but you really don't need to memorize that. Um, the idea is that we're able to, once we know the Lewis structure for a molecule, we're able to predict the three-dimensional uh, shape or molecular geometry, and that's, that's pretty cool. So here's the idea. When you're looking at a molecule, you, if there's just one central atom, you look at that atom. If there's more than one, then you look at one central atom at a time. And you're focusing on that central atom, you count up basically two things. One, how many bonds are there to that atom? And two, how many lone pairs there are in that atom? The idea being that the valence electrons on that atom are going to be either a lone pair or a bond, and they're pushing each other apart because they all have negative charges. And there's these uh, opposing forces occurring. The, the electrons are definitely staying attached to the nucleus because of the opposite charges, positive on the nucleus, negative on the electrons, but they're pushing each other apart. So the balance of these two opposing forces is what gives rise to the shape or the geometry of the molecule. Um, a few things to remember. There's two types of electron pair interactions. It could be a lone pair or a bond pair. A lone pair is just two non-bonding electrons. Um, the two dots in the Lewis structure. A uh, bond pair is means electrons that are in a bond. Now, for this and only for this, when we say a bond, we don't care if it's a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. We only count that as one, okay? Um, but when we're looking at the differences between how these bonds repel each other, uh, a triple bond repels more strongly than a double bond, which repels more strongly than a single bond. And that's because there's the there's more space occupied by the electrons in a triple bond. When they make a triple bond, they take up more space, and so they're bulkier and they push things away a little bit more strongly. So this, so the increasing strength of repulsion is that the bond pair bond pair is less than less strong than lone pair bond pair, and the strongest are lone pair lone pair interactions. You'll see this. All right. So this table right here, you're going to want to memorize. And I, I know it's a little bit. Uh, overwhelming at first, but put it on your card. It's You're going to really need it. Um, and the way you read this table, the way you do Vesper theory at this class, in this class, really, is you draw the Lewis structure first, right? That's the first step. Once you draw the Lewis structure, you look at the central atom. Remember, just the central atom. And you say, okay, on that central atom, how many lone pairs and how many bond pairs are there? And that puts you in this table here. So if you look at how many electron groups total are in the central atom? That includes lone pairs plus bond pairs. And then how many of those are lone pairs? That'll bring you to one row in this table, and you just read everything else right from it. The electron group geometry, the molecular geometry, and the bond angles. All right, so what do these things mean? Well, let's do a few examples to illustrate what I mean by these titles up here. First one here, carbon dioxide. The Lewis structure looks like this, and we're looking at just the carbon. Now, there are zero lone pairs in the carbon and two bond pairs. Remember, a double bond just counts as one, okay? So we, we're two electron groups, zero lone pairs. The electron group geometry and molecular geometry are, are linear, and the bond angles are 180 degrees. Well, in this case, the electron group geometry, well, in every case, the electron group geometry just means the, uh, the shape that the electron groups, including lone pairs, make. You'll see that when we get down here, that that's, this is the first time where the electron group geometry and the molecular geometry differ. And that's because in the molecular geometry, what we're talking about is the shapes that the nuclei make. And that's usually what we care about because that's what we can see when we image a molecule are the nuclei. We can't really see the electrons. And that's what gives rise to its, its, its uh, properties and everything is the shape of the, the, the nuclei, how they're attached. So 2, 0, linear, linear, 180 degrees. When we say bond angles, you mean three, the bond angle is the angle defined by three attached atoms to each other. Here, these three are attached to each other and they're 180 degrees. Now, if there are three electron groups, as in this molecule right here, one, two, three bonds, zero lone pairs. So we're here, three, zero. The electron group geometry is trigonal planar is what it's called, and so is the molecular geometry. The bond angles are 120 degrees. Now, I didn't draw this representing what the actual geometry is because you usually don't do with Lewis structures. But what this, the bond angles tell you is that the angle from here to here is about 120, and from here to here is 120, 
and so is here to here. We're going to see at the end of this module how these are a little bit different than 120, but for now we'll just keep it like this. Now, this molecule here is sulfur dioxide. On the central atom there are one, two, three electron groups. Remember, each double bond counts as one. The lone pair counts as one. And one of those electron groups is a lone pair. So we're three electron groups, one lone pair. Now these electron groups, the the bond pairs and the lone pairs make a shape that's called trigonal planar. It's, you know, 120 degrees. But <clears throat> the nuclei themselves, well, if, if we imagine a, a you know, a, like a, a trigonal, trigonal planar shape, but take one of those arms away, we get what's called bent. <clears throat> and the bond angles are less than 120 because the lone pair pushes away the bond pairs more strongly than the bond pairs push each other away. Okay, go back to that last slide and see what I'm talking about. <coughs> so we want to know that that's less than 120 here. Next, four electron groups, zero lone pairs. The bond angle, um, excuse me, the electron group geometry and uh, molecular geometry are both tetrahedral. Where is it? Right there. Bond angle is 109.5. One, two, three, four electron groups, one lone pair. The molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. And the bond angles are less than 109.5 because this lone pair is pushing these bond pairs away more strongly than they're pushing each other away. Now, four electron groups, one, two, three, four, two lone pairs right here. Again, the electron group geometry is tetrahedral again, but the molecular geometry is bent, and the bond angle is less than 109.5. Now, here are some other examples. You can go through and, and see how they line up in this table. I didn't get down into here, but it's the same same principle holds. So what, you, what do you need to know out of this? You need to be able to draw a Lewis structure, count up the electron groups on the central atom, determine the electron group geometry, the molecular geometry, and the bond angles. And that's it. Now, a couple of things. In ammonium, NH3, this bond angle here is actually 107 degrees. There are one, two, three, four electron groups, so the electron group's geometry is tetrahedral. The molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal, and because this lone pair pushes these guys, these bonds, away more strongly than they push each other, they're squeezed together a little bit, and they're less than 109.5 and 107, roughly, 107.3, I think. Formaldehyde, we saw this earlier. There's three electron groups, zero lone pairs, it's trigonal planar, and normally we'd say the bond angle is 120, but in reality, because this is a double bond, it pushes away these electrons more strongly than they push each other. This is a little more bulky. And we actually get a 122 degree bond angle on either side here and 116 down here. Sulfur tetrafluoride. There are five electron groups. One, two, three, four, five. One lone pair. That gives us what's called seesaw shaped for the molecular geometry. And we have a couple of different bond angles. In, in a normal seesaw, well, well, we have this, this bond angle here, <coughs> which is almost straight, but it's not, not exactly straight. It's, not, it's less than 180. Um, that's, that's what we need to know. You don't need, by the way, you don't need to memorize these exact numbers. When you look back at the table, you just see, okay, it's less than 180. That's all you need to know. And the exact angle is going to depend upon the atoms that are out here. And this at angle right here between these two is going to be less than... Um, well, less than 109.5, it's going to be 101.5. So there you go.